What is going on guys? Thanks for joining. This is Robert with RPG Outdoors. I will be your host today. We have another DIY for your kayak. Now for some of you guys that uh, and gals that use fish finders on your kayaks um, would recognize something like this. Now this is a 4 milliamp uh, Nakwa and it's meant to be used for fish finders and just powering stuff along the kayak. Now the issue, this thing works great it performs flawlessly the only problem we have is we use it on a seven inch dragonfly or we use it on a nine inch Lorance hook two the problem we're having is you fire this baby up you get out on the water you're fishing four hours later your battery is dead now when you use a fish finder on a kayak we all know that when the sun beams down you got to use this thing on the highest intensity for the screen Therefore, it eats that battery up really fast. You can purchase these in, I believe, an 8 or a 10 milliamp hour. And now you're going to increase the price as well. Now, I thought, what if I could use a larger battery and be able to power more than just my fish finder and get more time out of this battery? So that's exactly what I did. Um, I'm going to start off with showing, I'm going to post a, a picture of what it looks finished. And then we're going to go through, and then I'm going to show you guys how I built it. Um, you guys are going to be able to see everything and tweak it to the way you need it, the way you would like it. But the base format is going to be here. So without further ado, up here in the corner, I'm going to put in what this looks like. Like I said, this is on my uh, uh, Old Town 120 Topwater PDL. And uh, this is a 9-inch Lorance that I use it on. I get roughly three fishing trips out of it anywhere from six to eight hours a fishing trip yes you heard that correct that is nearly 24 hours of power now this is just on the fish finder uh, occasionally charging small things my phone etc etc the battery that we're going to be using is a Duracell that I bought from batteries plus there is the part number on it and it is a 12 volt 8 amp hour AGM and there's the part number right there i will add a list as as we're going through this i'll keep putting it up here in the corner you guys will see what the part is but like i said that is the battery from batteries plus um i also bought the charger from there which i'll also put on here that i use to charge the battery um the next most important piece that i opted with this is a cantex it's an electrical junction box now when you purchase it, it comes with one ear on each side. If you notice, something's missing here. What happened was, when I first built this, I mounted it to my rail system on my kayak with the toggle bolts and the plastic nuts on the top. Now, um, the unit that I chose to use is a little bit heavier than most units, so when it wobbled, that ear broke off. So I wouldn't recommend you using that to hold it down. You don't have to drill it any bigger or anything. It's already the size of the bolt. If you're using a four inch or five inch, something really light, uh, like a Hook 2 Series 5, or even like a Garmin 4 Series um, screen, where it's smaller, it's lighter, you're not gonna have the wobble. But I would still, still recommend uh, going with this route. Now, just took the box, and it comes with a lid. It's got a little, weather gasket with it as you can see mine's a little wore out from taking it apart this is my first made this is the trial run so to say um, this is the lid and it's made by Cantex <clears throat> once you get it it's gonna look something like this we'll slap it together of course it's not gonna have the switches in it or anything like that but this box is six by six inches by four inches six inches by six inches by four inches thick um, this is going to house that battery just perfectly where um, it's not going to be in the way you're not going to be able to get any water you'll be able to fit all the wiring in there without having to uh, have anything hanging out that's the beauty of this is i didn't want any extra wiring anywhere i wanted to be able to pop it off my kayak bring it in the house be able to charge it or charge it in the vehicle as i'm driving without having anything extra hanging out of this thing other than the charging cord or the power cord for the uh, fish finder. So let's start off by simply what I did is I took 
these switches. This one here I purchased from Amazon. It is the female charging port for the battery so that I don't have to keep opening and taking the screws off to be able to charge the battery. I just simply plug it in, it starts to charge. It actually shows on here when it's charging. Um, the voltage coming in, when you're done, you cap it off, keep the, that moisture out of there. I've got my master switch here. This is for my fish finder power and it powers the USBs as well. So when this is off, there's nothing that's gonna go in here. It's gonna short anything out. It cuts all the power off to everything. Um, last but not least, we got the double USB charging port and this is a one and one sixteenth inch hole. I use the uni bit and the uni bit I'll put up on the corner what it looks like. Um, you can purchase those very affordable at Harbor Freight without having to break the bank. And then the power switch here and then this is the charging port. Give you guys a close up of that. The shrink tube, as you can see, I shrink tube everything just in case anything decides to shake up against each other or shift inside there. It's not going to short out on anything. I do use the connectors. I ran out of the, the blue ones, as you can see, so I shrink wrapped it to keep it from marking out on anything. <clears throat> I'll try to draw out a simple diagram of how I wired this. I have two fuses in here, and the reason I did that is because we have the main power coming in from the charger and I fused it so if anything happens this fuse is going to pop and it's going to allow everything in here to just lay still it's not going to continue it's going to stop it right here and everything inside your box is going to be completely safe so first and foremost I'll try to pull this where it's a little bit more visible but this is the charging port you've got a positive coming up here I did use spades because I ran out of the fuse holder. They work just as good. Take your pliers and pinch it just a little bit to make sure that the uh, little tooth fits in there nice and snug. And then power wire comes out and it's fused into the fish finder. Um, this one here comes out, out of the battery, goes to the fish finder, and then this goes to the charger. So essentially you're just taking the two wires going to the battery and from there from there I fused here to go to the fish finder and then my grounds I just simply put the two grounds together like so and one goes to the charger and the other two feed the switch for the USB and uh, that's it plain and simple now once I drill out my holes and find out where I want my switches I took uh, scotch bright and I scotch brighted this whole box until there was no more clear on it It's got this thin clear film on it. You want to lightly lightly sand this and I, I say this the word sand lightly because I use Scotch bright for that reason if you use sandpaper this plastic it'll leave lines in it And you don't want that you want that clear smooth finish uh, so I use scotch bright and you just take that scotch bright and You work it down until it is a dull color once it's a dull color get you three or four good light coats and as you're coating it it'll just steadily get darker and you'll end up like i said i've had this one we've been testing it out in the field for several several months now and that's why i waited on this video but as you can see it's still holding pretty strong other than the strong water spots uh the bottom from where i drag it on stuff um just holds up pretty good the angle iron that i use here it's eighth inch thick angle iron I could have cut this at the edges of the box to uh, minimize, make it a little bit more portable, but this is this is the piece I had, so I just went ahead and used it since it was just a testing, but that's another recommendation. I would cut this down to where it's just the size of the box and it's not so bulky. I don't have any problems with it, so I just left it at is. You can also grind down the corner so they're not so sharp, but I used three bolts to secure this, and these three bolts that I used are Phillips head screws stainless steel the reason stainless steel because you don't want them to rust I have a recommendation here my recommendation is I use three of these uh, I put just a little bit of silicone on the threads and then put it in to give it a little bit of extra watertight seal um, I would recommend that you drill it out and use a quarter inch three quarters in length bolt quarter inch bolt with a locking washer and nut that way this doesn't ever strip out or fall. Now we've 
ran this thing on the highway with it on the kayak with the vibration and everything I was afraid that it was gonna break as easily as that ear did but it has not hasn't came loose hasn't had any issues whatsoever um, it's panned down and I'm gonna show you guys how I put this together we have got it would be mounted on the kayak like so and just take your battery you have to be careful with this because the battery fits nice and snug so it will pull that seal in with it and it fits really tight just like so push it down just a little bit and that battery is snug won't come out of there but once you have your battery in there you're gonna have to tilt it a little bit to make your connections for your power all right guys and then you take of course we did red for power black for ground little spade connector slide straight onto the battery you got to be careful and make sure that it's sliding on correctly sometimes it will slide between the plastic and the connector instead of into the connector let me find my ground wire it's floating over here ground wire labeled black and plug it in like so um, I took the pliers and I squeezed it just gently so that these fit a little extra snug um, like I said, I, I've had this thing apart numerous times just to look and see if I had any moisture or anything like that. I did get just a touch of moisture, not water, just moisture, but it was able to, to work itself out. Um, I drilled my hole for my trans for my, sorry, my uh, fish finder power wire. And what I did is, if you notice, I cannot pull it through this way. The reason I did that is because normally you want to have this hole big enough for this to fit through, but I did it backwards. I drilled it and I fed it through so that hole is smaller. So if I ever want to seal it with silicone or something, I use less silicone. You can use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill this hole and this will fit really snug. And you almost don't even need to seal it at that point, but I haven't had any moisture issues whatsoever. Um, my fuses, I always put my wiring in first. Like so you'll have plenty of room to do all of this but I feed my wire my extra wire in first for my power and I try to leave my fuses accessible the one here and this one just lays and that's going to give you plenty of room to put all those switches and you can see that battery it's going to allow you to put all those switches in there just like so put that lid back on and it sits nice and flush We'll put these screws back in. I'll try to do this quickly so we don't take up a bunch of time. Like so always make sure that that seal is in line. I had to use uh, just a touch of super glue. And just put some dots in there to kind of line it up and hold it the first time once you've had the lid on for a few times you're not going to have any issues it's going to stay put um, then lastly once you have your power wire out you I would recommend that you set it on the kayak wherever you're going to mount it and um, sit in the kayak take your bracket for your fish finder so you can adjust it now you can also mount just be careful it's not going to hit that battery but you can also mount a ram mount where you have a little bit more uh, movement with that but what I did is I set it on the kayak and I moved the bracket until I found a spot that I liked now of course my holes are already pre-drilled so just make sure your power wire is not pinched you find the position you want your fish finder bracket or fish graph whatever you want to call it Tighten these babies down. I used uh, self-tapping screws on that, Phillips heads. Take your power wire. You'll be able to pull the excess out of it and uh, have plenty of room. Just like so. We're going to plug this in. Mount it onto the bracket. Find my grooves here. Like that. Side number two. Put the knob. 
And now, like I said, guys, we've gotten so much power and ability out of this to be able to charge different things and do a whole lot more with it than just a standard battery. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can add to your kayak. And the reason I did this, I didn't want to make any extra holes in my kayak. There's so many cool systems out there that you can run the wire within the kayak and have the little push button switches. But I wanted it all in one unit. The reason being when we travel, if we are forced to leave the kayaks on the trailer, we have nothing else. We can't bring them indoors. I take two bolts out, literally 15 seconds. I take my whole unit with me. It's all here. I can charge it while I'm driving, while I'm at home. I don't have to worry about anything missing off my kayak, waking up in the morning, my battery's missing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is why we opted for this. Um, once you turn this unit on, you'll see it's got a little dust cover. It's kind of hard to see through it because the camera's not going to show it very well, but you flip that up. You have your two USB chargers. You have your main charger for your battery. And best of all, we have power. Plain and simple. If you guys have any questions on how this process to break it down anymore, I mean, it's a pretty simple uh, build. I, I just like that I can take this out and get three fishing trips out of it and I don't have to worry about charging the battery. So really good idea in my book. I know there's ways that you can change it. Um, if you change it up from what I did, or if you have a different style of setup, different switches, you can even add the switches on the bottom here where this is just a lid versus uh, it being on the top. So if you guys have any pictures, if you change it up and think you can do something different that uh, can add or help somebody else on making one of these, send it to me. You can find me at RPG Outdoors on Facebook. You can do it, send it to RPG Outdoors one number one at gmail.com. Or you can even hit us on Instagram. You can see uh, my handle on Instagram is Mr. RPG. So there you go, guys. Something plain and simple. Um, it weighs about three pounds. It's a little a little heavier than normal. Um, but I like the design. It works great for me. I said it charges everything. My phone, my 360 light. And uh, best of all, whenever I get in my truck, I can take it off, put it in the truck. I don't have to worry about it finding it on the highway somewhere. So... You guys let me know if you like this give this video a share give it a like and uh, we'll see you guys on the next DIY videos my name is Robert this is RPG outdoors thanks for hanging out we'll see you on the next build